Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and I'm here today with Rick. Hello. And we're going to be talking about... What are we talking about? The secret name. Secret. It's a secret. Now this is pack number one. Scenario from three. Yeah, so it's scenario three mm -hmm. from the Circle Undone Deluxe Expansion for Arkham Horror the Card Game, which is what we covered in the previous video. Yep. Uh, for those of you who have fed back some feedback on the first <laughs> video, and, and are watching this and thinking, well, they didn't take any of my information, in, uh, any of my <laughs> feedback into account. We're actually recording this straight after we've done the previous one. So, yes, please send us your feedback on the format. We want to hear from you uh, so that we can improve. So what are we going to cover in this video? We are going to be covering the player cards that are included in this. We are not going to be covering any of the scenario information. Spoilers. Uh, we've still not played it since, nope. since we recorded the previous video. So we are not <laughs> going to be talking about the storyline. All we will say is that scenario three progresses the storyline from scenarios one and two. Assumingly. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? Um, Let's hope so. Yes. But unless you died. Un unless you died, in which case start again <laughs> and, and then come and watch this video. So all we're going to be doing is talking about the player cards that are included uh, in this expansion. Mm -hmm. If you don't want any spoilers and you don't want to see any of the player cards, then um, yeah, that, that's what we're going to be talking about. But before we delve into talking about the player cards specifically, tell me about these gold cards. Well, this is new. This is brand new. So these are dual class cards. Right. So they have both or well, two symbols in the corner for which classes can use them. So for example, this is a guardian and a rogue card. Right. So both guardians and rogues can use them. Now, they're all at present, zero XP, so they're all level naught cards. Oh, so these can be included right from the start with a new character? Yes, um, if you ask how you're playing. If you're playing with you're playing each Mythos pack as and when it comes out and adding that to your pool, obviously that's going to add then. But if you've got all of your cards available from yeah. the beginning of the scenario, you can add these straight away. Yeah, okay. Um, but if, they, if you've got a deck restriction, so for example you can only have 10 Guardian cards and unlimited Rogue cards. Oh, right. It, because it's got a guardian symbol on there, it counts as one of your guardian, okay. even if sense. you've got an unlimited rogue. You know? So it, 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 one counts, that way the other. it counts as both. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Flexibility. Now, we only have five of these cards in there, presumably mm -hmm. one for each class combination. I think so. Uh, there's no mystic and sorry, not one survivor. for each. No, then no. there'd be loads. Yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so, so let's let's go through let's go through those first. Mm -hmm. So I have Grizzly Totem, yeah. which is a survivor and seeker card. It is an item card. It costs three to play, and after you commit a card to a skill test, you exhaust Grizzly Totem. Mm -hmm. That card gains another instance of one of your skill icons of your choice. Okay. So it basically makes. And you committing cards to a skill test better. better. And that could combo into the cards we talked about in our previous video mm -hmm. that increase in power depending yeah. on how good you are. So that can be really, really good. Yeah. So this takes up the, the necklace slot. Right. It's not called the necklace slot, is it? It's called, I can't remember what it's called, but no, yeah, it, it's, the, it's that slot. Accessory? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's accessory. Yes. Yeah, it takes up the right. accessory slot. Basically, it sits there and. Does that charges? It, no, no. So Ooh. permanently, for the rest of the game, every time you commit a card to a test, wow. once per turn because it you exhaust it to use it um, it basically gains another icon of your choice that's good right have you got one I have you've the, got a big gun the point forty five Thompson a yeah. tommy gun <laughs> as it will so it's obviously a weapon uh -huh. <laughs> a firearm it is illicit so we're, as we say we talked about our millionaire character oh yeah Preston can't use can't any use it. illicit cards which right. is a shame because it's really expensive and that'd be what you want it costs six expensive. to play six plays wow. obviously it's an asset it takes up both hands because yeah. it's a tommy gun um, uses as five ammo, which is quite a lot for a gun normally. Mm -hmm. um, as an action, you spend an ammo and you fight. You get plus two combat and deal plus one damage. So okay. a usual kind of. So gun. the effect of it is fairly simple. It's just mm -hmm. plus two fight, plus one damage, but five, five uses. Five ammo. As you yeah. say, five yeah. ammo is quite a lot. For mm. um, right, I have my favourite one, the Tennessee Sour Mash. So this is a, a rogue and survivor card. Uh, it's alcohol. <laughs> Uh, it's two uses, and you exhaust it and spend one of the uses to get plus two willpower for a skill test on a treachery card. Mm -hmm. Or you can discard it to smash somebody over the head with it, and you get plus three fight. Yeah, I love that. So you get That's more great. fight for smashing somebody over the head with a bottle of Tennessee Sour than you do by shooting with a forty-five Thompson. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so good if you're going to be coming a lot, uh, coming across a lot of treachery cards. Mm -hmm. 
I think I've played a lot of characters in Arkham Horror so far that have dealt with alcohol probably to solve their problems. Yeah. It normally helps, I find, yeah. <laughs> against beasties. Right. right. I have the Scroll of Secrets. Right. Um, it Secret is an asset. And Mystic. Yep. yep, Secret Mystic takes one to play. You use that as three secrets, and then you exhaust the Scroll of Secrets as an action and spend a secret. And then look at the bottom card of any investigator's deck or the encounter deck. Then either discard that card, add it to the owner's hand, place it on the bottom of its deck, or place it on the top. So you can just learn do everything. What you can, but, do it, what you want. but you're looking at the one on the bottom of the deck, which is interesting, yes. rather than the top. Mm -hmm. And then you can put it to the top. That's quite good. You can take it, you can discard it if yeah. it's a weakness I like or something rubbish. Manipulation. Yeah, and it only costs one and you can use it three times. I think I'll be putting that in a secret. Pretty strong. That I create. <laughs> All right, you've got one more gold card to talk I about. do. The Enchanted Blade, which is a three cost asset. Um, it's not illicit, which is good, but this is for Mystics and Guardians. Right. Um, it uses Fight, obviously, to get plus one combat for this attack. As an additional cost to initiate this ability, you may spend one charge, because it has three charges, to empower the blade. Okay. If you do, you get plus one combat and plus one of damage. Now, it takes up a hand and an arcane slot. Oh, right, it takes up two slots. Yes. Interesting. I don't, have we had anything that does that before? Well, not that I can remember. I'll have um, two-handed guns. Yeah, okay. Two-handed weapons and things. So, yeah, on its own, it's just a simple <clears throat> dagger, but mm -hmm. you can you know, boost it by Buff spending it a charge off it. Yeah. Right, so on to player cards. Mm -hmm. So, the Seeker card first. Uh, this is an event card that costs zero. Crack the case. It's fast. You play it after an investigator discovers the last remaining clue at your location. Mm -hmm. An investigator's at that location get a total of X resources distributed as you wish where X is the location's shroud value. Oh, wow. So, so it's not just you. Any investigator chooses the, gets the clue. If any investigator gets the last clue at the location where you are, mm -hmm. you basically, for zero cost, play this and share a load of resources around this. You, you, the, the shroud value of the location is going to have to be... It could be five. Yeah, but I don't know whether I'd include this card in a deck. I wonder if it'll count against fog. So fog increases the shroud by two, isn't a, it does. a negative thing? It does. I wonder if that'll <laughs> get seven I don't know, it seems very yeah. situational. You know, I've got to have it in my hand. We've got to take the last mm -hmm. clue. Mm -hmm. Multiple people have to be at the same location. Yeah, all to get three or four resources. Whereas emergency cash... Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that card, unless I'm missing a combo with something. Right. The Guardian card. Something worth fighting for. Now, this costs three. Uh, and something worth fighting for has three sanity on it. So, so it's an asset. It's an asset. It's a talent. Yes. And, and you can assign sanity uh, to, to yourself. Yeah. This is what it's, it doesn't take up a slot, but then it can be assigned horror dealt to other investigators at your location. So it absorbs horror that anyone else gets. Oh, okay. Right. So it'd be even good for the psychiatrist. Yeah. Uh, and then you end up healing... So it's a three-point horror shield for anybody at your location. Yeah. Basically. Okay, right. Rogue card, Intel Report. Um, this is basically... It's an event card that you pay two to play. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is the first thing you do is you discover a clue at your location. For right? Two resources. Yeah, Cheap. two resources, which is not bad. Irrespective of the shroud value yeah. or potentially even a locked door. Oh, yeah, by the sound of it. Depends what Discover Locked Door says. If Locked Door says you cannot get clues at this location, or does it say it cannot be investigated? I don't oh, know. One of the two. But anyway, discover a clue at your location. And when you play Intel Report, you increase its cost by two. Oh, you may increase its cost by two to change the discover one clue to discover two clues. So for four resources, two clues. Yeah. Or when you play it, you can increase its cost by two again to change the at your location to at a location up to two connections away. This is a really versatile card. On its own, it's two to get a clue from where you are, or four to get two clues, or four to get a clue from up to two places away, or six to get two, to get clues. two clues from up to... Right. Wow. In a rogue deck. Yeah. Rogues, rogues are not generally going around getting clues. clues. That's interesting. And it's got two... It intellect. has two intellects. So, yeah, it's very much a... Get clues uh, a, a get clues, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I like that card. That's good, that, isn't it? Yeah. Right, Mystic cards. They've got two lots of two Mystic cards. Two different Mystic cards included in this yep. expansion. So you've got Sign Magic, which costs three and is an asset. It's fast. And you have one additional Arcane slot, which can only be used to hold a spell or ritual asset. So it takes up your it hand. It takes up a hand. But allows you to mystically give a another, spell. Right. Which is handy. Okay. You've got lots of spells. Yeah, handy. See what you did there. See what you did yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, now this one is a spell. There's an event. Spells. It costs two. Banish. So you would use this as an evade skill. 
Right. To dodge a monster. And then use only on a non-elite enemy. This evasion attempt uses mind yep. instead of agility. Yep. Similar to the other Willpower. spells that do something similar. Yep. If you succeed, move the enemy just evaded to any location in play. Right. You banished him. If you succeed and you draw uh, the skull, the cultist, the... Whatever that one, gravestone, tablet, or tablet, tablet, or the, or elder, the thing. elder thing he symbol yeah. was revealed during the salvation attempt. That enemy does not ready during the next upkeep. Oh, okay, phase. you've banished him and you've made him uh, right. Fall okay, over. yeah. There's a Good there's a few that. mystic spells that you know get rid of mm. enemies. Finally, meat cleaver. <laughs> yeah. I like the survivor cards because their their weapons all seem to be baseball bats, meat cleavers, Ashy, Ashy. <laughs> things yeah. like that. Uh, so this is a weapon. Believe it or not, it's a one handed weapon and mm -hmm. it's fight. You get plus one fight for the attack, or plus right. two fight if you have three or fewer remaining sanity. Because you're so a loony. If, you, if you've gone a bit crazy, <laughs> you go insane with a meat cleaver. Nice. If the attack defeats an enemy, you may heal one horror. Wow. And as as an additional cost to initiate this ability, you may take one horror to deal plus two damage, uh, plus one damage. There doesn't seem to be much negative about that. Interesting. Good. This is a yeah fairly flexible card. That's tied in with sanity, which you know it's a meat cleaver. So there we go. Yeah. Wow. Favorite card? I do like the the sour mash because mm -hmm. the, I like the, <laughs> Just the like thematic of it. That yeah. it, it makes you good against fighting or willpower, and then smash it over someone's head to do them damage. I like that. I think my favorite one. No, bear in mind we haven't played with any of these. Is probably. Scroll of Secrets because I like deck manipulation good. and I like seeker cards, but also the intel report because it Sounds gives strong, rogues the ability to get clues from wherever. Mm. Anyway, right, that is the secret name. Ooh. Hope you found this video useful. Please let us know if you've got any feedback or anything like that. We'll see you next time for the next episode. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.